everyone, it's Alessandra here from LazyGamer.net and I've just received today an Xbox Elite controller. Now, if you're not too sure what the Elite controller is, it was revealed at E3. It is a professionally built uh, controller directly from Microsoft, uh, kind of like the ones you'd see made from uh, Scuf. Uh, they're built with professional gaming in mind and also people looking for a more, you know, premium controller that, you know, they're going to put through their paces spending hours and hours in front of the Xbox One. Uh, it retails locally for around two and a half thousand rand, so it is a luxury item. Um, and I'm going to be reviewing it uh, for the next few weeks, but considering they're not even in the country yet, um, some of you might have, might have seen them at Rage, I thought I'd just unbox it and, you know, kind of let you see what you get for that amount of money so uh it's a really big box firstly and before we get into that let's just show you what else is in the box you've got some user manuals blah 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 uh, more repair stuff more user manuals stuff like that we don't need to see that what is important here is in here, you've got a braided cable, if I'm not mistaken. So, the Elite controller doesn't come with a play and charge kit, unfortunately, which I find really, really stupid. But it does come with a set of batteries and then a nice braided cable for you to uh, connect to your PC, because this can work with PC, or to your Xbox uh, directly. And, you know, it is really, really nicely braided, so this is it's not going to frail or actually break anytime soon. So that's cool. Uh, but getting that out the way. We have the controller itself. So it comes with a really, really nice carry case. Uh, a f uh, you know, fabric carry case that is actually really hard as well. So when you're transporting the controller around to like competitions or you're just taking it to a friend's house or something, it's going to be protected. It's also got a really cool premium look to it. So that's cool. Open it up and we get the controller itself. Now the controller itself is very muted. There's no uh, colored face buttons here. They're all just black and gray. Uh, and the controller itself is just a nice black with a nice chrome finish there. Um, it is a little bit heavy. It's heavier than a normal Xbox controller, I'd say easily. Uh, but from, from the get go, just holding this thing is way, way better than a normal Xbox controller. It's got texture grips on the side here and a nice rubber finish which just feel amazing so just holding it in my hands already way way better uh the biggest change you can see just from the front here firstly this button here which is uh, a one two button it's basically you can store two profiles on the controller uh you know specific to whatever games and uh, instead of going into the software itself to change between them you just flick that button you can have many other profiles saved in the software itself but the controller only holds two at a time which is really cool and then obviously this the d-pad has been replaced by this really weird disc looking um you know thing which apparently is supposed to increase your accuracy in fighting games because you know you can pull off diagonal moves really easily um and just in general your direction is is better uh, the cool thing about this and about the controller as a whole is that it can be replaced. So I can just pop that off. It's all magnetic. On, off. And then, as you can see here in the case, I've got all sorts of extras here. So I've got the normal D-pad, which I can then pop out, pop on there, and that's it. It's working. Um, also in the case here, I've got, right now I've got normal um, concave, yeah, concave uh, thumbsticks here. I can replace them. Again, also magnetic, really easy to put on and off. But when it's on, it doesn't feel flimsy or, you know, loose. So that's really good. But it does pop right off there. And if I want, I can get a convex thumbstick with also a longer neck. So that's got a longer, you know, longer distance up from the actual uh, thumbstick there so that's nice I know there's convex ones for each and then longer concave ones as well for each so you've got a nice bit of options there and then the real um, meat on the controller so you've got four paddle buttons on the back here 
These can be using the software on the Xbox One map to whatever function you want. So I can put A there, I can put B there, I can um, set them to be my bumpers so that when I'm playing Forza, I change gears using the paddles instead of actually pressing there. I can use it for jump in Call of Duty or in Halo 5, anything like that. Uh, also, these, if I don't want to be using them on a game, mm, they should come right off. Or maybe they don't. Maybe there's a release. I'm not too sure. They should pop right off. I don't want to break this. Ah, they do. Okay, yeah. They just, you know, the magnet's pretty strong. So they do pop right off so that if I'm not using them, uh, you know, they don't have to be there intruding on my game time. But my favorite part about this controller, and it's something that the scuff controllers have as well, is the shortened triggers. So when you're playing a, a shooter, um, shortened triggers come in handy you know, because it shortens the, the time between you actually taking a shot and then resetting the button to take the shot again. So when you have uh, semi-automatic weapons like a pistol, this increases your fire time drastically. And when I reviewed the scuff controller last year, I noticed that playing the Halo beta, it improved my, my pistol game, you know, immensely. The one thing that the scuff controller lacks though is an easy way to change that back to a, you know, a full press. So um, when you're playing a game like FIFA or you're playing a game like Forza, you need that full trigger press because having it half reduces like your throttle or your sprint speed in FIFA, something like that. And to do that on the scuff, you had to basically dismantle the controller, take out the pin that was shortening the, the trigger and then put it back together, which was really, really, you know, obscure and not easy to do. The Xbox One Elite controller does that on the controller itself. So as you can see here, yeah, this green dial is right at the top, so my triggers are at a full, full uh, press here. If I just flip it down, they're now half. So the trigger's still being activated, but the travel time to activate it is now halved, and I can change that on the fly. I can even have it full on one trigger and half on the other. And there's literally nothing else to it. It is the easiest setup ever for that. And that, to me, already puts it in a league of its own compared to the competition out there. So that's just a quick overview of the Xbox One controller, uh, the Elite version. Uh, it's It should be in the country, it should have been here this month. I think it's only coming next month now, something happened to that. But it is a very, very premium controller, very expensive controller. But again, just from feeling it here, immensely premium feel, uh, really nice so far. But I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to be playing some Halo, some Forza. Um, some Rise of the Tomb Raider, you know, just for casual, you know, other non-professional games and just see if it really is something that professionals should get or if it's an accessory that you should probably consider if you're spending lots of time in front of your Xbox One. So, yeah, keep it locked to lazygamer.net.